Fireball with Super Witches and Druids is insane. Today we're going to do some attacks in Legends League and I'm going to show you that these three are not only a perfect combination, but might end up being one of the best ground armies in the game. So here is today's army, a really short troop bar, which is always handy to have. And then in terms of the pets, it is a little bit different. Here's the hero equipment as well. We're bringing the unicorn on the warden because we're going to do some extremely short but simple warden walks. So let's get into some replays. Give me a second, guys. Jeez, how bright is this orange scenery? I kind of hate looking at it. Let me know if you agree. But let's talk about the first part of a Super Witch attack now. It's just doing the easiest Warden Walk in history. Yep, look at that. You do not need to get insane value with the Warden Walk anymore. The Fireball taking out a corner of the base is enough. So we're going to Warden Walk all of that. Then coming with the Super Witches, we got the Queen and the Siege Barracks together on the bottom side to set a funnel. Then we Wall Break in with our three super witches use the king and now we can start putting our druids in now don't get me wrong you can do longer warden walks if you want if you want to go for extra value why not if you want to bring the jelly on the warden go for it but this here is just the simplest way of doing it put the unicorn on your warden do a short little warden walk clear out a corner of the base and go in with your main attack your super witches don't need the fire uh, don't need the eternal tome so the fireball is great to start off with and you don't need insane value with it either Queen's doing a great job on the bottom side. As you can see, we have got the healer puppets in action there. King's doing a great job in the core. We do start to get some bears now. So I think there's only one druid in action. Hopefully, I can wake up to this and put some of the other ones in there. But look at this. We go straight through the town hall. Use another rage on the back end of the base. There goes the last couple of druids. And essentially, use your royal champion wherever you want in this attack strategy. Could have used it with the queen if I thought the queen was going to go down. Going to use it on the top side, though, because it look like the super witches we're gonna miss all that and that's what i like about the super witches in this army as you can see two of them have gone down but the last one isn't gonna go down easily with three druids on it you don't need your queen in the core of the base when you've got the super witches right because the super witches can shoot air targets whereas the queen is gonna set a much stronger funnel than the king because she can shoot over walls yes the gauntlet's insane but so is the invis file and whilst this isn't an overkill trust me the other attacks you see today will be an overkill this is a pretty annoying base for this style of attack and i just wanted to prove to you all that you don't need to get insane value with the fireball. Just get what you can, get out, and, you know, you're not going to time fail with super witches more anymore, are you? You're doing like a 10-second warden walk. Big win for this army. By the way, I did record all this live, then my PC broke. So we are going to be talking over replays today. If that's annoying to you or if you prefer the live attacks, let me know down below. I'm sure some of you are wondering, how do we take down these double invis bases that have gotten so popular? Don't worry, they're extremely easy. It surprised me how easy this attack strategy is because... You don't need insane fireball value. Most of the time to get these down, you fireball the core. No, no, no. I'm just going to fireball the corner compartment here. So the warden, yet again, we don't need any druids with the fireball there. And look at that. Beautiful opening. Now, I also could have fireballed this top corner where I thought about fireballing the CC. But you'll see, not dealing with the CC is kind of nice here. So I go straight into the CC now. Um, and the CC is going to slow up my troops to give time for my log launcher because we need to activate both these invis towers. It's going to give time for my log launcher to come into the core and activate both invis towers. So the CC here slowing my troops up is actually a good thing. We got the queen with the frosty on the top side. You can use the diggy if you want. I do like the frosty for the its ability to slow down heroes as well as not just defenses. Queen on the top side. I put one druid with her because you can see the druid is healing the healers, which is super nice. And look at this. We open up the path to the core. Everything's going to come in here. Now we stack up with druids. We're going to need lots of them to get through the core of the base. Or are we? I guess we'll find out in a second. Sneaky gobs come out, and we're just going to keep putting down rage spells. Remember, you've got to place them to get the druids in it as well. And look at how healthy all the troops are. Look at it. So we got the royal champion on the top side. I use a rage spell. I'll, I'll leave it just in the shot so you can see it. But our focus is on this super witch push. Because look, this toxic core of the base just got wrecked. 
All our troops are basically full health at this point. We've still got the king ability, which is ridiculous. Now we can use the jump spell to get out of the back end. The RC is still doing great. The hogs got stuck in the NATO. The queen is doing fine on the top side. And this is completely and utterly wrecked. And we didn't even get good fireball that value. You don't have to. Just set the funnel with your queen, which is really strong on this style of base. Use the log launcher and you'll get insane value. What I love about this attack strategy is you don't need to be good at water walks. Look at this. This is my water walk. We get rid of the queen. We get rid of that whole compartment. Five seconds and now we're pulling the warden over with our king. Make sure you don't pull him over with your queen. Keep in mind you're using your queen on the flank with the siege barracks nine times out of ten. Unless there's the invis tower next to the town hall. So the king goes in. All these super witches and the big boys are going to go in. And away we go. And this attack here... It perfectly sums up why this attack strategy is ridiculous. So the uh, druids doing their healing. Now, in this attack, I definitely could have brought the log launcher. In fact, it might have been better to open up all these walls. Because you're going to see what happens here. I do not have enough wall breakers to get through the base. We use the jump spell here. By the way, look at this super witch on the right-hand side. You can't help stupidity, right? There's only so much you can heal in this army, and I'm happy my druids are staying on my main troops. Going straight into a rage tower without a, without a uh, what is it, an eternal tome. So it is a little bit risky. Rage towers are a problem. Thankfully, invis towers and poison towers are a bit more meta at the moment. My king ability goes off. We freeze the monolith. King, unfortunately, yeah, the gauntlet's not going to get a whole lot of value here. We have the last of our druids coming in, yet again, just sprinkling it. But we're out of wall breaks, we're out of jumps. How on earth are we going to triple this? Well, I guess we'll find out in a second, won't we? All the troops switch. I use the invis to keep my warden alive. I can't let the monolith take down the warden, because that rage gem is invaluable uh, for not just their troops, but also heroes and, uh, well, the druids are troop, but yeah, mainly for the druids. All our troops, despite beating on a wall for ages, are quite healthy. I think the last of the druids have just gone down, so we've just got to push through the rest of the base without any healing, but that's fine. We've got a queen ability. We've We've got a royal champion ability. I think the lesson from this attack is your queen's quite a good funnel troop, right? She hasn't even used her ability yet. If you, if getting through the base in terms of all the walls is going to be a problem, look at using the log launcher. I think the log launcher would have been really nice for me here. But alas, I'm not going to complain. We swag the queen ability, swag the royal champion ability, albeit only just. And this is so strong i cannot recommend this army en enough if you love super witches it's so easy to do no more water walks none of that just spam that fireball army and get going with your actual attack so i've done all eight of my attacks today and this was my only fail in legends league with this army today so i wanted to finish by showing you it partly because i just want to show you how hard it is to fail and how much has to go wrong so already Great start here. Try to pull the warden with the king, and uh, that did not work, but we are able to pull him with a super witch in a second. So thankfully, my uh, my heart rate did go down a little bit there. Then we got the siege barracks and the queen, and the queen is one of the biggest reasons for the failure of this attack. But here's the other thing you have to keep an eye on. So obviously, we got the super witches at the back. They've got the big boys, and the king is a little bit ahead. And watch my king here. So we get the next layer wall breaker in, but look, the king is getting completely wrecked and isn't getting much healing at all. I put the rage spell down, but the druids are not doing anything. My king has already gone to Phoenix and now he's fighting a triple ice golem CC. So essentially his, his entire gauntlet gets zero value. Would have been better to bring the spiky ball. Now the next stage of the failure as the druids are trying their absolute best to keep the super witches alive is my queen down here. Thanks queen. We love you beating that wall. We'll come back to her later though. That's not the end of her wall beating for this attack. The druids are doing their best to keep the super witches alive. That monolith is completely wrecking this attack though. It finally goes down. But yeah, it's put in a lot of work. Now let's come back for part two of the queen. Yeah, queen goes back to the original wall she was on. Thankfully, the warden and the bears do take care of the town hall. We still do have two super witches up. So despite all that destruction and mayhem, still keeping two super witches up shows the power of the druid here. 
The Druids are about to run out, though. Uh, they are just healing the Apprentice Warden. And yeah, once they run out, then we got no more healing on the map. And there is a little too much base. Now the Queen goes into ability. So glad she can shoot those air skellies with her ability. And yeah, another great wall. Deliberately picks the higher level wall. Gotta love you for that, Queen. We still got the Royal Champion with one freeze spell, though. Use the freeze just as she goes invisible. That, that was a little bit on me, but it does also protect the warden. Then the scatter. Yeah, I wish I saved the freeze for the scatter here because the scatter completely and utterly wrecks the hogs. I'm not sure we would have got it anyway, but there you go. That's what it takes to fail with this attack strategy. The queen um, is a possible thing to happen, though. That's definitely uh, possible when she's on the outside of the base. Because keep in mind, you've only got three wall breakers and the jump with this army. And I didn't have enough wall breakers to do this. We'd already used one here, one here, and then one all the way down here, which was meant for my queen until she went wall beating. But this attack strategy, I think, is really good. If you love super witches, use it immediately. Super fun, super easy to do. Try it out yourself and let us know how it goes. We've got so many different druid armies on the channel. Take your pick. Uh, which one would I recommend? Let's put the Zap Druid on the left side. This is especially strong if you don't have your fireball upgraded.